what is happening between Ayabelo and EFCC? So EFCC, I'm planning to come and do a protest against you and Nigerian youth. A lot of you will have to join me. EFCC is inviting him. He can't go. I people are dead. I don't tire for this kind of nonsense. Stop harassing Yahoo boys that are dealing internationally. The only Yahoo boys you should arrest going forward. As a lawyer, a lot of people have asked me, what is happening between Ayabelo and EFCC? Act 1, scene 1. EFCC went to Ayabelo's house. They blocked the road to the house. They don't allow anybody to pass. People were stopped from passing both ends at 1, scene 1. Then, all of a sudden, boom, EFCC said a convoy came. They opened the road that was blocked, that nobody was allowed to access. Opened the road. Boom. The convoy passed through. Opened the Abelo's house. The convoy entered the house. Boom. The, the Abelo came out, according to them. Entered the convoy. And they drove off. And then EFCC and police started shooting sporadically. They said it was the governor of the state that came to, you know, whisk him away. The question is, governor Moto get immunity. I've been at the governor get immunity. So when they were surveying the house or when they blocked the house, they cordoned off the house. No drone to survey from Scalise helicopter to be just common drone to say, okay, as we did down, let something be looking up. That one, nothing happened. Governor Karan and Commons. EFCC declared him wanted. Oh, yes, the Abelo is a wanted man. The Abelo went to court. Court said, no, you must appear before the court or go to EFCC. Yes, the chairman came and said, Yayabelo has escaped. He has put uh, FBI, KGB, and all uh, Bitapo on red alert. They will arrest him. He does not uh, prosecute him. He will not, uh, he will resign. Boom. Court said, Yayabelo, you must appear. Yayabelo went to EFCC office, escorted by the governor. Uh, you know, he's a special advisor to the governor or former governor. You know, the rule for Nigeria. Yayabelo went there. With his people, governor escorted him with full security detail. White and white, the white lion. They got to EFCC. EFCC, I don't come. EFCC, look, look. Ah, it's okay, wait. And then the next, he said, no, 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 you can go home. Or maybe he said, I am a choosy. I am a choosy. I am a choosy. EFCC, where are you? And they got confused that they were looking for a yard below. Or they forgot the paper where they declared him wanted. The man took pictures, did video. Nothing happened. The man you declared wanted that you are looking for came to your office. Nothing. No arrest. No questioning. Nothing. He, the man you said had escaped that you are putting tapu on a lot. He left your office. And then all of a sudden you remember, ah, this man is declared wanted. He's still a wanted man. You issue press release that afternoon. In the night, you mobilize police. Boom. We suddenly remember now that, uh, he is wanted. He went to his house, started shooting gun, or went to the governor's lodge, started shooting gun. Now we need him. Somebody you are looking for. Over the years, ESCC has constantly harassed a lot of young boys, whether they are suspect or not, whether they have proof or not. They go and pick boys from their houses. ESCC has successfully stereotyped young boys that drive bands, tagging them Yahoo boys. Now, if you see a young boy that drive bands, you, you go talk to a Yahoo boy. Now, EFCC have also successfully stereotyped the young boys that drive Lexus. Now, a lot of young boys are scared to buy Lexus or Benz because they believe that when they start driving those type of cars, EFCC will get intel and suspect them and come and pick them. Right. That being said, I'm not going to say that a lot of you are not thieves. A lot of you are not fraudsters that buy Benz. I know a lot of you that actually do fraud and you have Benz, right? But EFCC... On the other hand, after this stereotype, they go to the universities, they bust the universities, they go into hostels, they scatter hostels, they go to people's houses at night, they enter their houses, you know, because they got intel that a group of boys are inside the house and they are Yahoo boys. Now, the reason for this protest is this. All those Yahoo boys that, all the alleged Yahoo boys that EFCC have been harassing and picking up, busting houses and going to their school lodge to pick them, none of them have been placed to wanted before. But Yaya Belo is wanted in this country and is still in this country. If it is Yahoo boy, he does not even need to come. In some cases, he doesn't even give you an invitation. 
boom, you block the account or you will use leg to pull down the door and then you arrest them. Or if it is protesters, you will arrest them and charge them for treason. Somebody you are looking for, you say you are looking for, you declared wanted, you put in tapo on red alert and yet the person came to your office. You say go and then in the night you came looking for him and you want me to believe that EFCC don't get story inside this matter. All that there, there is not all of this. No, I want me to clap for you. The full country don't turn to comedy skits. Today, nah, I am a choosing. Tomorrow, nah, Dangote and NNPC. This one, nah, EFCC and uh, Yaya Bello. Uh, uh, tomorrow, it will be president and vice president. Meduguri, Meduguri, somebody damn won't spoil. Ah, I don't want to go there. We'll go there later. EFCC boss have promised that if he does not get Yaya Bello within a period of time, he's going to resign. And up to now, he has not got to Yaya Bello and he has not resigned. It's crazy. You understand? It's really crazy. Yaya Bello, first of all, you make mouths. Uh, EFCC or guy, you make mouth to, oh, you know, work. Next thing, you went to go and collect court order. And the court order Yaya Bello to show up. He still did not show up. Yesterday, I did see one video. See, when I try to catch him, when I know if he catch him. So, it's crazy how they pick the youth by ordinary stereotype, but they cannot pick the one that they have proof that he has taken money. You stereotype the youth and just pick them up by your stereotype, by their hair, by their earrings, by what they wear and the car they drive. But the one where you get evidence for, you cannot pick him. No, it's not done. The youth. Wake up. So it is time for you people to take your own fair share of what TSCC have been doing to you. We'll pressure them to go and bring Yaya Bello or the other should resign. You know? One of the two must happen. So the youth, many people are ready to join me for this course, uh, you let me know. But we announce a date very soon. It's either you provide Yaya Bello immediately or you resign immediately. Thank you very much. Don't play. Else you don't learn. I will learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that the governor of uh, Kogi is protecting the ex-governor of Kogi from being prosecuted. What kind of nonsense is that? So if it's a Boko Haram person that had <laughs> and then they want to arrest him, one governor will say he's protecting. Get military people into the place, burn the rascal out. What nonsense is that? If it's some individuals now, you go into the village and the place and arrest. Go and pick up the and bring him out. What nonsense is all that? Kogi, former Kogi governor, is holding the country to ransom. And then go and pick the guy up and, and begin to prosecute him. Yes, this is inviting him. He can't go. I people are dead. I'm tired for all this kind of nonsense. Go and pick him up and bundle the guy into the Black Maria and take him to one place and go and prosecute the rascal. Nonsense. I don't understand all this immunity that the EFCC is claiming that the governor has, the, particularly the governor of Kogi State has that gives Yaya or that gives the governor the power to be able to shield EFCC from arresting Yaya Bello. I don't understand the immunity. The constitutional immunity that the governor has is immunity from prosecution. Immunity from prosecution. That is the immunity that the governor or any governor in Nigeria has. Not immunity from uh, 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 from being arrested, not immunity from from being investigated. He doesn't have that immunity. Not to talk of immunity from that that gives him power to protect somebody who has been declared wanted, like Yahya Bello, EFCC. I don't understand you now. I don't understand you now at all. The EFCC chairman must do the right thing. You can't continue to play on the sensibilities of Nigeria. You said you will resign if you don't prosecute your Ayabelo. Now, if you don't prosecute him, resign so that we know that we get somebody else. And if you know you don't want to resign, do the right thing. Let us see that you arrest him, even though we know that at the end of the day, nothing might come out. But let justice be seen to be done. That will serve as a deterrent. And again, I have another advice for you. Stop harassing Yahoo boys that are dealing with internationally the only yahoo boys you should arrest going forward are yahoo boys that scam fellow nigerians in nigeria here any yahoo boy that scams oyibo people of their dollars leave them 
You know why? Because the Oyibo people, ask yourself, they are also doing Yahoo against Nigeria and Nigerians. All our governors that still looted funds, they go and hide this money in Oyibo land. And the Oyibo EFCC, they do not arrest our Oyibo, our Nigerian that steal our money that go and hide it there. They allow their Oyibo people to do us Yahoo and allow our looted funds to be hidden in their land. Check it now. US, UK, Europe. How many times have their own Oyibo EFCC arrested any of our Nigerian politicians who loot our money here and hide it over there? They don't arrest them. They leave them because they use those looted funds to develop their countries. So, if any Yahoo boy loots or, or, or Yahoo's any Oyibo person, leave them all. Be smart, be smart, be smart. It is only Yahoo people that Yahoo local Nigerians that you should deal with. Because even the Yahoo people say, need to get sense. You can't be Yahooing people that are already poor. People that are already suffering. Anybody who is living in Nigeria, forget it. They are already suffering, even when they have money. So stop Yahooing local Nigerians. Only do that abroad Yahooing. Do that abroad Yahooing because the Onyibo people, they are Yahooing us. Abacha loot. All the Nigerian politicians that are buying properties abroad. Go to Dubai now. Dubai, I could say, was practically developed with African money. Africa looted funds. They put all kinds of schemes in place to make sure that they, they, they Yahoo Africa and Yahoo Nigerians using corrupt politicians who are gullible because of their greed. And they are happy and shameless at the same time, thinking they are investing abroad with the stolen funds and thinking they are, they are wealthy or rich, not doing that. They are stupid. The Oibo people are just doing them Yahoo. So if Oibo is doing us Yahoo, shouldn't we allow ourselves to also do Oibo Yahoo? The only part that I don't like is the part where you will not have the Yahoo done to fellow Nigerians or fellow Africans. That one I will not support. But for Yahoo to Yahoo Oibo people, let them continue to Yahoo Oibo people. And he have to leave them. Stop harassing them. If you cannot bring your Yahoo to book, why are you harassing these people now?